Hello, this is Skyler, and you are watching episode 5 on programming the LEGO Mindstorms NXT using Robot C. So, uh, very quickly, music's by Discord, so check out his SoundCloud, and um, yeah, it's great stuff. Alright, so, um, recap. The program we're working on right now, there's, you know, there's actually stuff here, and that's because um, the last episode went way over time. And uh, so I have to finish that up. And so we are programming the LEGO Mindstorms NXT to detect a line. And it's kind of complicated, but this uh, setup will allow us to have more reliable um, detection. And so what we're doing here, um, and if this doesn't, doesn't make sense to you, just watch the other episode or just go along with it, whichever. Um, basically, we've got light value is 32, and that is like a collection, it's an array of numbers. Like, it's a whole bunch of numbers, and there's 32 of them, and they're all integers, which means a positive or negative whole number, and uh, you can get into that. Uh, just Google it. Um, and this right here is basically saying, hey, they're all going to be zero right now. If I had done that one, then the zeroth, um, or the first element, whichever way you want to think about it, that one would be one, and you could look at it that way. Um, more in the last tutorial about that. Uh, we've got shift in value. It's a function we created, um, and it's going to basically, we're going to give it something, and it's going to, all these numbers, um, they don't have to be zero. They end up being something else. Um, they get moved to the right, and a new value gets put in the first spot. And so this is so that we can store the last uh, 32 light readings we have. And we can make it 64 or a bigger number, but 32 is it's a good number. Um, we got our task main, and we've got just a loop that displays the last eight recent um, values. That's right here. We're erasing the display, and then we're using a for loop to display the last eight uh, on the screen. And then we're shifting in a new value, so it updates it, and then we're waiting half a second doing it all over again. And um, then we got the actual function definition of shift in value, and basically we copy um, we, we create a temporary holding place for um, values, and basically right here we set each individual value of temp values to be equal to the associated, or the, the corresponding uh, value for light values. So temp values is basically light values at the end of here. And then we, sh we, we basically move everything over using this part right there. Um, so yeah, let's get to work. Uh, what we need to do... The, the, let me go over the reason why we're using the array again. The reason we're using the array is because change does not happen very suddenly, especially when you're reading, um, very, when you have close, when you have readings that are very close together as far as time. You're going to have a smooth transition, and so if we just look at the relative change from one um, reading to the very next, it's not going to be as good as if we can say, well, hmm, 30 readings ago. The, um, the light value was, you know, maybe it was 30, but now it's 60, because there's going to be a, a very, there's going to be a change, a gradual change from 30 to 60, or 60 to 30, whichever one I said, and so we can't do that. We have to look at values over time, and so um, we need to write a new function that will show us the biggest value in the array, and so um, it's going to return the index, or... Um, the index of an array, that's basically like what element, like, um, the array's array elements start at zero, and it goes to, um, whatever the length is, minus one, and so this would be index zero, index one, index two, index three, and so index 31 would be this one, and so it's going to return this, this function, it's going to give us back which, um, index it is, and so I'm going to say int, because we're going to return a value, like void, void means that it's not going to return anything, it's a no buts about a function, but it means it's going to give back a whole number. Um, and then um, we'll do the function name, so get largest value. How did it know that? I didn't even type it in yet. Anyway, um, anyway, yeah. Um, and then the definition of the function needs to be exactly the same as the declaration, except for that semicolon, so I'll get rid of that semicolon. And here we go. So, um, if I compile the code, F7, it says, empty, non-void function not allowed. Return statement is required. It's saying, hey, 
you said that you're going to send back a number, and so we'll send it back. And it's saying, I need to put return 5. You know, that will work. Um, and then it's just saying, hey, you're not using it, so why do you even have it? I'll get there, robots. Yeah, I'll get there. Um, so we're not going to return 5, because that'd be boring. I'm going to say int temp equals 0. zero and I'm going to return 10. And then I'll just do something with temp. And what we're going to do here is we need to go through the whole entire array and figure out which value is the biggest and then send that back. And so we need a for loop, just like, just like up here. So I'm going to do 4 int i equals 0. i is less than 32, because we don't want it to go past the elements of the for loop, or the elements of the array, otherwise bad things will happen. And then i++. plus plus. And we could do i minus minus, but that would mean that i gets goes from 0 to negative 1 to negative 2, etc. And we want to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up to 31. Alright, so in there we're going to check to see if um, temp, if that index, of, if the element of that index is um, bigger than what we're on right now. So if light values temp, and right now temp is 0, which means the, zero, the zeroth element, which would be that one right there because it's the first. Like for arrays, they decided that the zero, that the first element on the list was actually going to be element number zero. And so, element number zero, in this case, right now, is um, if it's less than light values i, and i will change it. It will count from zero to one to two, and it'll check. That will be like all of the elements. If that's the case, then temp equals i. Basically what it's saying is uh, i is going to go from 0 to 31, and so it's going to check basically what that translates into. It's that element, then that element, then that element. And if any of those elements is bigger than the element of what temp is now, then it's going to set i to temp. And so, um, yes. Let's move on. <laughs> I hope you understand that. If you need specific help, please comment, but um, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, just ask a specific question if you don't understand this. Alright, so, um, oh, and I'll put the brackets on. And, um, so that's that part. Now, we need to implement the function. There's so many times when um, I'll write a function and I'm like, it doesn't work. Well, I need to actually use it. Um, let's rewrite some things. Because we don't, I mean, this is just displaying the stuff. We need to check something. We need to check if the biggest value is bigger than a certain amount. We need to see if the difference between the biggest value and a past value is, if that difference is big enough for it to say, yeah, we've got a line. So we're going to say if light values get the largest value. And the reason we have this right here, the get largest value, like I said before, it returns, it doesn't return the actual largest value, it returns the spot of the actual largest value. Like, if this returned 0, then it would mean, hey, check that one right there. If this returned 31, then it'd be like, hey, it's that one right there. And that's because um, it's for greater flexibility if we want to use this function for something else. If we want to actually know the actual spot, then we can do that. Um, and it doesn't take us... It's, it doesn't take much trouble to convert it to you know, the actual number in there, which is this is doing right here. So if that, if the biggest value is greater than light values um, zero, if it's if the biggest value is bigger than the recent value plus 15, then we know that something's happened. Basically, if the biggest value, let's let's just say this is 15, and the recent value, and pretend like these, these zeros were not zeros, um, and then this value was maybe 30, and this is our most recent value, and this is the biggest value in the array, and these are all other numbers that I'm too lazy to change because that would take a while. Um, basically they're saying if 59 is bigger than 30 plus 15, which it is because that's 45, and 59 is still bigger than 45, then you know, there's, there's been a definite change between 59 and 30. And so it says, hey, you know, there's 
there's something here, there's a line. Um, then we're going to play tone. And that's just to say, you know, let's 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 beep so that uh, I mean it's it's an easy way to um, let us know if something's happening. But um, there's still something we need to do, um, and I will demonstrate that. I will download the code after I reset these values, and I will show you what I'm talking about. So we got those set to zero. We got that, and um, I will oh. Change this wait one amsec to one because if I waited 500 milliseconds, that's half a second. If I waited half a second before I sent it a new reading, then it's kind of slow. So we'll set that to one. So it's going to wait one sec, one millisecond before it does this whole thing again. Um, and so I'll turn the robot on and um, start you cam up so you can see what's going on and I'll download it F5. Here, mind follower run. So it's got the values, and they're kind of moving. So I'll um, go ahead and do this. And so, yeah, that's pretty cool. But that right there, the um, beep, like it, it continued on longer, which means that it detected the line multiple times. And, um, we want to refine that. Basically, what's going on, I'll show you, is the robot, it's, you know, let's just say its biggest value is right here, and, you know, its small value is right here. This might be maybe 31. Its biggest value is going to move this way, like all these numbers. All these numbers, they get slid that way. But, it will, you, even when 59 is here, it's still going to say, hey, we've detected a line, again. And so, what we need to do is create a bounce mechanism. If you've ever heard of a switch bounce, um, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. Basically, it keeps us from detecting the same line twice. And so, we'll get to work on that. So, I'll set all these values back to zero. And uh, what we need to do is we need to say int light bounce time. And I could have just said t or something, but I wanted to be descriptive. And um, it's going to be an integer, you know, positive, negative whole number. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, basically, this is going to be a counter. And it's, it's, it's going to be a timer. And so what, is, what the program's going to be able to, to do is it says, okay, well, Hmm, I just detected a line. Oh, wait, I detected another line, but the line, the detection of the lines was so close together that I'm not even going to think about it as two separate lines. It has to be the same line. And that's because, I mean, this is milliseconds. Your robot, um, unless you're, like, reading a barcode or something, which would be actually kind of interesting, you're not going to get lines that close together for the speed of your robot. And so that's why we can do this. So, light bounce time, that's going to be... It's gonna, we're gonna set it to a big number, and then it's gonna count down. And until it reaches zero, it's not, it can't detect another line. So right under play tone, we're gonna do light bounce time equals, and I'll set it to 20. And right after that, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna say and and, and this right here basically means um, there's something else that you need to check too. Um, light bounce time equals equals zero. What the and and means, ampersand ampersand, that means this thing has to be true. You know, light values get largest value has to be greater than light values, zero plus fifteen. That has to be true. And this has to be true in order for the if statement to say, yep, let's do the stuff inside there. And so uh, yeah you can look it up. It's under bitwise operators I think. And um, find lots of stuff online about that. So when light bounce time equals zero, only then will it actually say, yeah, we detected a line, let's play, let's, let's beep, and um, let's set this so that we can't detect a line before this counts down. The, the thing is, we need, to, we need to make this count down now, because it will only detect one line right now, because we don't change light bounce time back to zero anymore. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do an else. Basically, else is, says, if this isn't true, 
you know, if this is if this stuff isn't true, then do what's inside here. And then you want what we're going to do is going to say if light bounce time is greater than zero, and then we're going to decrement or subtract one from light bounce time. Light bounce time minus minus. What that does is says, hey, as long as for if if light bounce time is one or two or three or four or five or six or seven it's going to subtract one. And the reason we have to make this check is because we don't want it to go negative because if you keep on going negative, then how binary works is after a while you actually get positive, and that's not cool. Like, it goes from negative 35,000 down up all the way back to 35,000, and we don't want to have to do that. So that's just a simple check. Um, let's download it. And switch to here. So running, and that's what we want to see. Basically, we've got light sensor in the front just in case, and every time it crosses that line, it beeps. And it doesn't beep any longer or any shorter, it beeps the same amount of time. And so instead of playing, instead of putting um, play tone, you could, you could um, say um, line count plus equals one. You could say, hey, you know, we hit another line. So that is the conclusion of my of the of this episode about counting lines is that works and this code works. So yeah, I hope you like it. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions for me, please leave them in the comments and I will see well I won't see you. You'll see my code next week.